Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple newcomers into the temple. Two members straight from Seventh Sense Studio, the d who are not who had previously attempted to launch the, their particular Kickstarter with Exordium Iona, and now relaunch now relaunching bigger and badder than than they could before. In one corner we have Atisen Kalsilgu. I know, like I said, I I said I was going to get these wrong, and. <laughs> nice. it, and in the blue corner, we have Berke Bidesi. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, how how are you two doing today? Or tonight, I suppose, in your neck of the woods? Well, it's afternoon, actually. Or maybe evening. Everything is cool here. Everything yeah. is in order. And how about you? How is your day? Uh, things are getting back to a normal set. Oh, set of circumstances. After after dealing with after dealing with two days without power in my house. Oh, and the power's it back is on. awful misfortune. The power's back on. Thankfully, it came it came back on Friday afternoon. Now I just have to deal with the fact that there's a giant tree in my backyard. So, so much for any <laughs> gardening this weekend. Where did that tree come from? Oh, um, there's a bunch of trees all o all over the place. Yeah, it's just one of it's just one of them got knocked down, and it, it one of the big ones got knocked down and is blocking my backyard. Nah, wow. hear that. I could probably wa I could probably walk through it if I was careful, but it's it's an e it's an evergreen tree, and I don't like dealing with all the spikes. Well, we are glad. We are glad you are good in condition. I mean. Yeah. So, I'd like to open with the humble beginnings. For both of you, walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games, and what made it stick. Well, I can. I can start. I was in the high school, and me and my friends were hanging. And I must add, one of them was Atish. <laughs> so one day he came and told us about a game. About a game which we can do anything we want. Which offers endless possibilities and opportunities. Then I was like, whoa, uh, I should dive into it. It seems, it seems decent. Therefore, I started to play... Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 edition with my friends and since that day I'm playing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, well, my parents were playing D&D &D, uh, since before I was even born. Uh, well, they not they, they did not introduce me to the game but uh, they kept playing with their friends uh, in the house, and I was just there uh, listening to their uh, playing and uh, incredible stories in a fantastic world, which which was very um, incredible for me uh, in that age because like I was like two, three, four, mm -hmm. which which was incredible uh, for me. Uh, and later, uh, at when I was six, year, six years old, uh, my father, for the first time, my father uh, told me, let's go, let's play. Okay, I believe that you are ready. Let's go. And right then on, I was just hooked in it. Man, you, 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 you just can't believe it. Uh, well, I... I Almost every day, ask my father to play with me, but you know, well, they were working and that was not possible. But later on, 
when I found uh, when I found friends that I can play with, I just immediately just g go and ask them, and it just happened. Like we 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 were playing like at least five days a week, <laughs> like something <laughs> like that. Yes. <laughs> Every session was like uh, at least six hours or so. Uh, well, uh, it was it was incredibly fun times, man. Oh, since you since you since since that does you mentioned st you mentioned starting up with um th you mentioned starting up with third um. You probably had to deal with the horrors that it that is Godzilla or or even some even somebody trying to get away with pun pun. <laughs> well, uh, in in my days in in my uh, first um, experiences, uh, I believe my father did not really uh, introduce me to the. Uh, extended uh, version of uh, D&D because, you know, I was very young and I, I did not deal with that. <laughs> I believe. Mm -hmm. Which is, un is, certainly is certainly understandable. I mean, I, would I wouldn't um, plop someone right into, right into the, right into the thick of it, things. Yeah. As, or as, or as, um, as I've sometimes referred it's to that. But, go, but going on, uh, going on from that, going on from that. Have you guys mostly stuck? Have you guys mostly stuck to D and D as uh, as being one system, guys, or have you exper have you experimented with other systems over the years? Well, to be honest, we just stick to the Dungeons and Dragons 3.5 for years, and I mean it. Like, like ten years straightly, we were, we just played it, and after a while, I can't remember. Maybe just twice we have tried Vampire the Masquerade, Vampire, yeah, uh, but mostly. In our settings, and 3.5 edition is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for once, I believe I've played the White Wolf, but uh, just once, I, if I remember correct. Mm -hmm. Now, Exordium Iona, one of the big one of the big things that you first off before you even get into some of its contents, how did the idea come about? Well, actually, I can answer this question briefly. Um, the idea of creating tabletop games has been in our minds for a long time, really. And we have been playing more than 10 years, or maybe maybe much more. After years of playing with great joy and creating different in-game scenarios, we have decided to create a campaign setting for our longest scenario, actually. It was a piracy theme scenario that had lasted nearly t three years as two different scenarios on the same concept, the piracy, I mean. Well, we were pirates embarking on the high seas with our crew and plundering almost everything that came in our way while enduring mental challenges dictated by our game master which is Atesh <laughs> in this case then one day we stopped playing the game since most of us were studying or working and had no time for games you know what I mean mm -hmm. however we were having short conversations about the possibility of making such an attempt from time to time yet the opportunities of the periods and our mindsets at that time did not allow us, so to speak. However, almost three years later, we realized that we were ready to do it. We have discussed the possibilities and the conclusion was a deal. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we found Seven Sun Studio and start to create tabletop role-playing games. Yeah. 
Now, with that in mind, with given Exordium's subject matter, what's the, what's the appeal, in your opinion, of pirates? Well, Ooh. actually... Well, actually, pirates are... How can I say? But pirates are amazing, and pirates, you know, it's like it's a parts. double edged, double -edged <laughs> blade, you know. Uh, on, on, on one hand, uh, they are just, you know, raising their voices uh, to be heard, and uh, on the other hand, they are they they have the image of the bad guys and uh go and plunder everything you know mm -hmm. uh, well actu actually actually really hard mm -hmm. actually we had long discussions about the concept of piracy between us and we see that yeah. everyone has at least an idea about the pirates since they were real and their methods, lifestyle, ships, and yeah, almost real everything world. related to them is reachable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the term piracy itself is mm, already an interesting and tempting subject for us. Therefore, we decided to create a piracy team setting. Yeah. Um, and it seems like one of the other themes is... Um, cor is corruption slash chaos. Yes. <laughs> which came actually, which came later uh, in the process of writing. Um, we, we, we just, uh, we first uh, just wanted to make a piracy setting at, at first. Uh, but then on, uh, we figured that a little bit of Something is needed to make it more, um, much more uh, interesting, you know. Uh, therefore, we came up with the idea of order and chaos. The pirate concept alone was not enough to create the in game atmosphere we have desired. Yeah. Well, we have desired much more, um, how can I say, much more. Mm, horrific and much more challenging actually yeah challenging. so we decided to expand the project by adding the complex subject in it the chaos itself mm -hmm. because in a sense chaos is more abstract and subjective than the piracy mm -hmm. and we created almost every detail about chaos by by improvising by utilizing our imagination to create a believable universe, actually. Yeah. Now, with that in with that in mind, when it comes to the, when it comes to the set when it comes to the setting it's the setting itself, um, I suppose, well, I, suppose <laughs> I suppose a good I suppose a good thing to start to start with is. Is um, are you guys utilize when it comes to things like ship combat? Are you using the naval combat that was introduced in Ghost of Saltmarsh as your um, ba as your backdrop? Um, no. Uh, well, mm, kind of yes and no because uh, you know th there's there's some lines that you cannot uh, uh, ignore. Reach, yeah, ignore. And uh, th there are some things that you have to create from the start, uh, and uh, you know it it has to be unique. And we really decided to be uh, a really unique uh, game mechanic because, uh, well, f first of all, maybe it's it's a bit harsh, but the game is not really designed to be played with. Uh, like 60 cannon ship you know uh, because <laughs> when you have 60 cannons on your ship the uh, outcomes change drastically mm -hmm. 
and therefore we have to uh, come up with a, a unique idea and unique solution uh, for uh, naval combat mechanics. Uh, therefore, yes, we kind of uh, stick to the uh, original rules of the game, but uh, we really actually created a new, really unique uh, mechanic to uh, fight with your ships. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, have, uh, okay. we have adapted the 5th edition simplest perfect principle, actually. Yeah. But um, our mechanic is easy to use and we are not sacrificing the realism yeah. while doing so. Because we have like 140 cannon ships. Mm -hmm. And of course they are devastating. Yeah. They, are, they are really yeah. completely destroying everything in the game. However, then we decided to make some additional rules and make some optional rules to balance it. It certainly makes sense. Now, when it, when it comes to when it, when it comes to the su the subject matter of the of those um, of those mechanics, um, would some would somebody be able to would somebody be able to cus to customize or even create new ships? using the systems that you guys have. Oh. <laughs> um, that's a actually yes. Yes. Yes, they can they can uh, create their uh, unique design designs for their ships uh, and they can uh, they upgrade. can create yeah. they can they can create ships. Mm -hmm. However, uh, we have created the racial ship designs. Like Dragonborns have their own ships, mm -hmm. and they have some certain specific rule sets. They That's can right. breed. They can breed energy, and they are balanced that way. They have initial. Um, they have hit points according to it, and they have armor report, uh, according to it. However, um, let's say an Elven ship. Well, the Elven ship is fast, agile. However, it is not sustainable. It is not um, that much enduring. Yes. Uh, when you compare it to a Dragonborn uh, ship. Mm -hmm. Well, we just uh, wanted to... Uh, Highlight the racial uh, abilities and uh, racial uh, living style to to the ships, uh, and therefore uh, each and every uh, ship of each uh, each and every uh, race has different uh, attributes uh, to them. They have different unique uh, abilities, and therefore. Uh, it's. I believe uh, we we believe that uh, it is going to be very interesting to see uh, people's comments uh, comments on this because we we just worked really hard to make it really unique and uh, exciting to play. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in mind, I'm. While there is, while there is, of course, a ha there is, of course, going to be plenty of ar plenty of archetypes. You you list it having um, thirty one new archetypes. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to go into the two new classes that you get that you guys have planned. Which um, one of them you hint you detailed a little bit about in the in the uh, demo booklet, and that mm -hmm. is the imitator, which is a good. A good place to start. With the two new classes, what sort of gameplay style are they are they meant to represent? 
one is yeah well uh, both is actually uh unique uh, in their own rights but uh first of all I I imitator is uh much more versatile uh, compared to any like any class in the game uh and because because yeah. he can, because the imitator can imitate anything and we mean it <laughs> it can <laughs> imitate <laughs> it can imitate anything um any class it can Im imitate any feature of the any class therefore it is very versatile and the other which we have not yet uh published uh it is going to be uh more of a uniquely um like like something like a battle mage but i i wouldn't say so because I, I, I don't want to uh, ruin it, uh, ruin the uh, surprise for the uh, people, but it's going to be great, uh, just like Imitator and unique uh, as of uh, as of the game. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that said, when it comes to the when it comes to um new archetypes um, because of the amount that are going to be present i'm guessing that you have a um archetype that a new archetype for every every one of the core classes mm -hmm. yes and our classes also yeah mm -hmm. um, and the other th the other thing that i'm that I'm curious about is the mechanic that you're going to be using for the to represent the chaos, the Noctiferous. Yes, well, Noctiferous is a really a whole new game mechanic and a rule set representing the chaos. Um, you can think like it is a ethereal great flood, which swallows the whole planet and even the planes of existence within the seconds and from that time new rules apply for everyone and i mean it's really for everyone regardless of their type i mean you can you can be a vampire or you can be a dragon and rules will apply to you no there is there is no exceptions uh, well except morphic monsters i mean the chaos monsters of course they are not affected However, all of the other things are affected. Mm -hmm. There is default effects and there is additional effects like 20. There will be a 20 new effects will immediately affect the whole planet, the whole plane of existence immediately. And five combat effects there will be. Mm -hmm. And also some really deadly mm -hmm. weather conditions will be. And they will be like 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Now, the other, something else that I find, that I find mm -hmm. kind of interesting is the discussion of new schools of magic as well as a new damage type. Uh, what can you tell me about both of those? Well, we have created them for overriding the conventional rules, actually. Because if there is a chaos damage, um, you can think like this way. Chaos damage will override every damage immunity and every damage resistance in the game. Therefore, it is very dangerous for every being. And the new school of magic, the chaos magic, will, will really change the combats and will oh, really en combat. enrich and will really enrich the sessions mm -hmm. by by adding some depth. I can say that. Mm -hmm. Well, just like the name suggests, uh, it's going to be chaotic. Mm -hmm. 
speaking of that, let's talk about crafting. The one thing that the core rules te have have um, neglected, I suppose, and of course, and it's and it seems that you guys have your own have your own approach to a crafting system. Um, what can you tell me about that? Ooh. Well, it's about it's about the Nactopurus actually. The crafting system, I mean, because there is a new item type, mm -hmm. which we named the Chaosit, and Chaosit is only appear during the Nactopurus, and the Chaosit items should be crafted during the Nactopurus. Therefore, there will be special items to craft these items. However, they are really expensive hard. and they are really hard to craft. Mm -hmm. And of, co of course, th of course, a a player group that's f that's sufficiently um, determined will find will find ways around that kind of thing. Yeah, of course. Well, it, it, it's still going to be hard uh, because uh, Nactrophius itself is meant to be hard. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Nactrophius itself is dangerous and uh, everything that you do uh, during the Nactrophius will be dangerous also. Uh, well, mm -hmm. you know, we can... Yeah, we yes, we have created a new... Uh, crafting mechanic, but uh, we also made it uh, hard because the chaos itself is represented represented as a great uh, danger and uh, a great um, level of difficulty uh, to the game. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, yes, there will be options to craft uh, all all kinds of items, but uh, it's going to be hard and dangerous. Because mm -hmm. it was the main focus. Yeah. And when you craft the calcit item, we wanted to. There will be consequences. Mm -hmm. Now, with that with that in mind. When it can... <clears throat> since the, since this is a pirate themed campaign, a quest that there's there's of course no way that one could do this without introducing fire without introducing firearms and introducing powder weapons into the mix. Mm -hmm. Now, some games that introduce those have their own introduce their own mechanics to separate them from missile weapons that ju that just use arrows or bolts um how do you guys ha how do you guys handle um pit whether it be pit whether it be pistols whether it be um blunderbusses or anything like that in a w in a way to keep the simplicity but also make sure that it that they're distinct from things like cr things like bows and crossbows but we we actually stick to the uh, original game rules here uh, because when you change something uh, so fundamental, uh, it may really hurt the uh, conventional ways and uh, it can be a little bit dangerous for the writer. Uh, but of course, uh, we have created uh, magical uh, items uh, such as pistols, rifles, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want to uh, come up with new ways uh, to use those with with this way. Yeah, like reloading times and mm, well, I must say. It was really hard to create cannons because they are really hurting anything in the game. I mean, really anything. Mm -hmm. So we mostly stick to the original rules 
and we add some I don't know we added some um, it's some sauce in it I mean I did. I did see that there was the that there was the rule with shrapnel, which certainly makes sense because you don't have to be nearby a a cannonball hitting in order to get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, we have added uh, other mechanics uh, like shrapnel, uh, which will affect uh, your gameplay inside of a ship uh, because. You know, there is there can be anything in in a ship. Uh, well, we have thought of. Uh, I believe. Well, we believe uh, most of the situations that you can uh, get in, and uh, we have written uh, specific mechanics for e each and every every one of them. Mm -hmm. And with that, with that in mind, um. One of the other th one of the other th things that I want things that I wanted to delve into is some is some of the new is some of the um, new races that you're in, that you're introducing into the mix. <laughs> uh, so I believe I believe there's at least there's at least one that was actually no. No, I take it back. Both both of them were introduced. Let's start. Let's start with the mm -hmm. Nitar. Um, what sort? What sort of? What sort of narrative? What sort of narrative style could you could you potentially see with player characters of that race? Um. Well, uh, Nitars are mysterious beings. Uh, Nitars are obsessed with um, knowledge and arcana and um. Nitars are a little bit unusual compared to uh, other races uh, in the game. Um, well, first of all, uh, we have we will uh, introduce uh, three uh, aquatic races, uh, which are completely living uh, in underwater, and therefore. Uh, their their uh, living environment is much different than uh, usual uh, environments. When they when they build uh, their structures, it has to be in the underwater, and it, it has to be compatible with the uh, circumstances uh, in underwater. Therefore. Uh, they will be much different than uh, a usual uh, city. And Nitars are... Nitars are uh, actually like the brain of uh, aquatic races. Mm -hmm. And the two other races also, Srenar and the Yvosas and Yvosas are like a worker, like they are worker class, and the Srenars are like a warrior class. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the society. Yeah, we, we do not we do not want to uh, undermine their uh, position uh, because they are the best at what they do. Uh, therefore, uh, their unique approach. Uh, uh, in the society is uh, very valuable to uh, aquatic life. Mm. Each each and every one of them. For example, you was are the best art architects in the Iona, mm. while the Srenars are the guardians of the oceans. Yeah. Now, with that with that in mind, given the Given the no, given the notion, uh, given the notion of just go, of just going across the seas on on a ship is going to be an integral part of the fantasy of this kind of this kind of setting. Um, 
how would you ha how would your particular um setting handle managing a crew we have completely uh created new uh mechanics for the crew itself uh which uh you will be able to completely uh control both control and isolate uh parts of the crew mm -hmm. and uh There will be um, crew morals. Yeah, there will be crew moral. Um, there will be a, a captain, of course, uh, in a, in every ship, and uh, the captain will have uh, the most uh, impact uh, on the ship. And, and the sh uh, naval combats. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the captain will give the orders and the crew uh, will uh, do the order, but uh, it will all, all almost all of the uh, actions will depend uh, on how good is the crew and um, well it, it, it's it's you can think of it this way it's really 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 hard to manage a ship. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, the crew is a must, and uh, the crew is actually everything of the ship. Everything that you can do with a ship, you have to have a great crew. And also, quality of crew yeah. impacts combat very deeply. Mm -hmm. Therefore, having a good crew eliminates the opponent. Yeah, and of course... Of course, for me personally, the thing that is important when it comes to doing crews or, or any sort of ship-based thing is whenever whenever ship combat happens, making sure that everyone is able to contribute something at <laughs> the table. Yeah. Yeah, we want to we wanted to uh, empower uh, this notion uh, in our setting. Because every part of the crew is really, really important uh, as you control a ship. Like the sails or the cannons or the... Mm, I mean... Repairing, re repairing <laughs> and everything. Yeah. And with that in, with that in mind... How, like I can a lot. I think a lot of I think a lot of it can easily be seen. But have you guys have you guys made sure to integrate how how much the presence of magic affects how how well na how naval activities are you are done? Well, yes, we have a lot of spells that affect the naval activities, mm -hmm. like submerging the ships. Or making them faster. Mm. Which is which is a fair, which is a fair um, setup. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you when you write a piracy setting, well, of course you will include the ships, and of course you will uh, write many uh, different spells that you can do uh, that you can apply or. Uh, use uh, with a ship mm -hmm. it is a must oh, yeah. like you can reload the cannons in a round mm -hmm. and fire them all of them at the same time mm -hmm. you can control it uh, with without a crew yeah those kinds of stuff mm -hmm. <clears throat> And I know when you earlier on when you're when you were talking about um about ship designs and and emphasizing the adva the advantages that different races have um in the de in the demo it focused primarily on the man of war class of ship but I'm guessing I'm guessing other larger and smaller classes of sh classes of ship will be represented in the full book. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh. How... There will be ships like Galeon, Galei, Karak, 
and Ship of Bark, the Line, Frigates, Barks, Ship of the Lines, mm -hmm. Briggs, Caravels. <laughs> yeah, there is all kinds of, of all kinds of ships. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, each of them, ha each of them, because of, I guess, I guess, because of the setup that you have, you could have two ships of the si the same size class. <laughs> for, that are, mm -hmm. that have di that have different racial templates and they wouldn't operate necessarily the same way. Yeah. Yes. Their cannons also have some racial types, mm -hmm. and therefore the manowar, tiefling manowar, are very different than the dragonborn manowar or dwarven manowar. Well, let's let's dip into that for a bit for a bit because you had mentioned the Dragonborn Man of War utilizing en utilizing energy types. Um, mm -hmm. What would what would be the distinctive factor when it comes to a Tiefling Man of War, for instance? Well, the Tiefling Man of War has the resistance to fire, and in a naval combat, resistance to fire is really game changer yeah. while dragonborn can breed energy depending on their type uh, i mean it can breed um, acid or it can breed fire therefore it will be more threatening for other classes mm -hmm. yeah, especially since it seems that you guys have a new have a um setup to cover um um, fire outbreaks on th on things like ships. Yeah, of course. Which, given given yeah. how dangerous Greek fire could get could get back in the day, that would certainly make sense. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, with the. Now, when it comes to when it comes to monsters, um, you have boast you boasted about a new monster type called Morphic, which, mm -hmm. if I'm if I'm reading it correctly, that's supposed to be the way that the that um chaos is represented on the monster end of things. Yes, Morphic monsters are the apex predators <laughs> of the Exordium Iona, mm -hmm. because. During the Night Furious, they appear from nowhere, and they really chase the one who have the assonance on it. Mm -hmm. And if you are sentient being, then you are, then you have the assonance. Therefore, you should always run. Which I think I think is a good way to to um, delve into an a um, issue that I've seen I've seen crop up a few times, and that is whether or not you should stat dragons. Of course, well, dragons being metaphorical in the, in this instance. Well, well, well. Think 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 of it this way. Uh, there are some um, adventures. Like uh, Stracht, which is really dangerous to live in. Well, double it. <laughs> well, double it. <laughs> Rule of the Nocturus will overwrite everything and every being. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you guys shooting for as far as a total page count for the book? Well, if you reach all of the stretch goals, then the book will be like for 400 pages. Yeah. And if we maybe didn't... More. Yeah, yes, maybe more. But if not, then the book will be like 300 pages minimum. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can, I can see, can see that, can see that they. At least a few, at least a few of them have have been unlocked so far, and and um, congratulations on go, on getting on getting the thing funded in just a few days. 
thank you very much. But uh, none of our stretch goals really reached right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, but in the bad, near future. My, my bad. I forgot what I forgot. One zero. Nope. There's <laughs> there is no problem. In a few more days, we will reach the first stretch goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, with that in mind, what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window? Not a hard, not a hard and fast date, but a gen, but a general area. Oh. Uh, sorry, I I I do not think uh, I did understand uh, well. You mean the shipping? Not necessarily, not necessarily shipping, but a but a completion date. Ah, okay. Well, it will be the last quarter of two thousand twenty-two. Mm -hmm. Like mm, I can say, it will be September or maybe October. Mm -hmm. Well, for something with a bit of horror leaning, October would October would certainly be on point. <laughs> well, the ninety percent of the book is already done. We should just do the editing, and some artworks should be prepared. And if there is any uh, stretch goals that have opened, we will just uh, work on th those parts. Uh, but uh, it's not going to be uh, that much because we were uh, we we tried to be ready for every uh, situation uh, beforehand. Mm -hmm. Everything is ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And well, the fir the first casualty is often the battle plan. But. With that, and I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops, but with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank both of you for taking the time out of your schedule to brave the hell of time zones and come all the way up to my temple. Thank you for well, reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. thank you for it, it was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It was our pleasure. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, Drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And of Thank course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>